Looks like we might have a leaking head gasket. Yeah. I took this out for a couple laps around the barn and I found that the head gasket was weeping coolant out the sides. The current plan is to just back off and retorque all of the head fasteners and give it another shot. By the way, if you're new to this channel, this is not a freshly rebuilt engine. This is a engine that had sat for a long time. I haven't looked in here since I run it, but it looks like all the push rods are getting oil and uh, no other major issues. And it looks like this whole thing's gonna have to come out to get to these head bolts. Oil line off. Are <sighs> you stuck to? There we go. Okay. Oh boy. What was that? Oh, now my arms are stuck around this exhaust. The part that fell out was this little ball thing here. I think it's like a pivot for the compression release. So I got that back in there. I was kind of playing a dangerous game there. I should have pulled all the screws out before I, I pulled the whole assembly out. Because these holes, I mean, I could lose a bolt down these things. Good news is I only have to do this once because if I have to replace the head gasket, the new gasket is going to be not this stuck. These are going to end up being in my way. So I'm going to back all these off and then torque everything down. There's two size nuts, half inch and five eighths. These are all fine threaded, obviously. Here's the sequence. It's, uh, it's pretty typical for every cylinder head. And then there's two different torque specs. There's earlier and then hardened washers and hardened nuts. I'm assuming this is a later engine, which has hopefully hardened washers and nuts. So I'll use these specs and I'll do it in two stages. So I'll go up to probably 60 foot pounds on the half inch and 120 on the five eighths. And then I'll retorque it down to the full spec. This one's actually missing its washer. For the final torques, I'm not going to use an extension because that'll throw off the number. Well, hopefully this works. Apparently it's normal for these things, even with a brand new head gasket, everything done right, to still weep like that. Apparently you're supposed to seal it with Permatex on the water jacket side. So if that doesn't work, I mean, if it's still like really bad, 
I'll, I'll do that. But if it's just barely doing it, I think I'm just gonna leave it because that is pretty much normal. Okay, I got a new gasket here. But just in case I have to redo all this to replace the head gasket, I'm gonna trace it out. Easy. Oh, that's already a problem. Lost this compression valve. valve. Uh oh, don't drop it in the engine. Don't drop it in the engine. It's right over a push rod hole. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Whew. Okay. Thank goodness. Got new locks on here. It occurs to me now I should have put the push rods in first, but I think I can sneak them in. Oh yeah, piece of cake. So the trick to getting that little plunger back in for the compression release is you gotta unbolt this all the way and then the shaft slides out, and then you can get it in with a screwdriver and push it back. Yeah, so the problem is that little ball in there for that detent was not seated in there all the way. And you can tell because I couldn't turn this thing, but now it's you can easily turn it by hand. It feels actually smoother than it was, I'm not sure why. Okay, I'm just gonna check the valve to rocker clearance here. It's supposed to be 10 thousandths when it's hot, so it should, at cold it should be a little bit looser. I unfortunately only have millimeters here, but 0.25 millimeters is about 10 thousandths. It's tighter than that. So we're going for 0.3 millimeters, which is, uh, what is that? About 12 thousandths. Right about there. Perfect. Not seeing any oil out yet, it might take a while. Yeah, it's starting to come out. All right, yeah, it's coming out. I think we're good. This thing's been sitting for a week since I took it for that shakedown, and there were really three leaks. Actually, two leaks right here, but they're combining. Is this compression fitting on the, on the input for the diesel, and this drain were both leaking? So this was also leaking. I'm not sure who put this thing on, but whoever did it did not tighten it properly all the way around. So I just tightened the bolts. They were actually loose and I tightened them up and we'll, we'll try it out, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna fix the problem. And then the third leak was actually just some idiot checking the oil and just letting it drip down the side and it was on the ground right there. So that's it for the engine leaks. That's actually really good. Okay, so back here, this would be a lower priority thing because the blade and the, the belly pan won't interfere. But we definitely have a leak here. We have a leak here from the winch. And I can see it like pooling here. The right side final is not leaking anymore. That one was leaking before. So maybe it was just overfilled. Actually, it looks like it might be leaking. I see fresh fluid right there on that track. That's leaking on this outboard side. So that would be, to fix that, you would have to break the track and pull the sprocket off, I think. 
So we'll just go ahead and leave that alone. Okay, I've been over this whole winch and there's nothing leaking except for this, this drain plug here. So it looks like what's happening is it's falling on the drawbar and then it's coming over and then dropping right there, which is nice because there's nothing worse than rebuilding something and uh, it just leaks right away. Okay, and while we're down here, let's go ahead and replace this thing. I have a much nicer one from the uh, salvage workshop winch that I got. He doesn't need it. This one has seen better days. This one's all flat. This also had this on it, which, and then there's this bottom plate. But this seems to track with these bolts. I, oh yeah, it's pretty loose. I'm usually really gentle with pipe, pipe thread stuff. I don't like to over tighten it because it makes it a lot harder to get off in the future, but this one's pretty loose. This. Could be that this thing's just been so welded up. All right, I'll get some bigger pins here, but for now, let's put these in just to keep this top plate from falling out. Okay, so for this leak, I have determined I did not tighten this enough either. Nice. Just tighten this some more. It's so loose. Actually, while I'm down here, I see one more leak. Right there. Yeah, right there. Oh, that might have been the, uh, I don't know, it's coming out of there. Oh, that's the clutch. So, this is just from the clutch, from oiling the clutch before I wrote it. I need to put the drain plugs in both of these, though. I forgot to do that. Probably good that I'm down here. Everything else looks okay. Who painted this thing? This is a mess. Ready to test this thing out. It's nighttime right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and start it up, back it out of here, let it warm up, and then I'll check the valve clearance and leaks. And while that's warming up, I have to replace the spark plugs in my wife's car. By the way, I did a little electrical check after the last video and I found that this heater over here wasn't working. So they're both working now. wasn't running warm enough to set the valve clearance. I'm sure it's still gonna ooze a tiny bit because from what everyone's told me, that's pretty normal for these engines. But at least in the half hour that I was running it, and that was about a half hour, I don't, nothing was weeping out. So we're gonna call this good and then continue on. Nice night for pressure washing, that's for sure.
Okay, got the belly pan here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is that like the spacing here is way different from the spacing here. And that's kind of a theme going forward. You'll see on the brush cage. These are not obviously not stock to the belly pan. It's been welded in there. So, and this is obviously where the brush cage goes in. So there's one other thing to fix here and that is these are all cracked. The other thing to mention is this. This is not correct. I'm, I'm like pretty sure. One thing I learned from Squash's channel is that these parse diagrams are to scale. So it's supposed to be flat, straight out, not bent like that. I'm not gonna fix it because I know for a fact, since I pulled it off this machine, that it fits. It doesn't rub. Okay, on this bracket, it's bolted in. It's very loose. I don't remember if I loosened it or if it was loose before. It looks like they've attempted very horribly to weld these nuts in. So maybe they've had an issue with it loosening up in the past and they welded it in. I'm also worried though that if maybe this looseness helped deal with the bending over there these four holes actually hook into the back of the bell housing. So I think the best thing to do is just gonna to be to fit this in now to see how it works before I paint it or go any further. I thought it was just cork in here, but someone's broken off these bolts. I wonder what that's about. Don't want to go too hard, it'll break. Oh no. There goes my paint job. Yeah, it's not budging. I don't want to break an extractor off in there. So we're just gonna drill it out. All right, that is extracted. On this hole, I thought it was just full of dirt, but it turns out it's got like half of a broken bolt in it. So I'll use the torch on that again. All I'm doing with the torch is I'm just, just heating up the middle part and then just slowly blowing it out, trying not to get the threads. It worked okay on that one. Still really tight there. Don't want to break it off. Can't get the drill in here. I 
do have a flexible drill coupling somewhere, but I think it's back at the house. Oh, I got it through though. There must have just been one little piece of slag in there that was stuck to a thread. Yep, let's move it. There we go. Okay, you can see this top one, I can get a good angle. Those are a little bit messier. And that is because I actually broke a tap off in here. I, I wasn't filming it, but I broke one off and I had to punch it back through with a torch. But those are good enough. The bottom one, where I only had a torch at once. Yeah, there you go. So that one came out pretty good, in my opinion. Top one a little bit boogered up, but not too bad. I'm almost wondering if they like torch something off to get this old engine out, since it was a salvage engine. There we go. <sighs> Fortunately, this thing isn't like dangerously heavy. Probably weighs about 150 pounds. What are the chances this actually fits? You can see it's, that just needs to move over about half of an inch or an inch, the whole back. We're actually pretty close in the back of that belly pan, so maybe I don't need to bend it. Looks like it's been bent around that thing. Okay, it was not easy, but I got the belly pan kind of dry fitted in here. There is a couple issues. So the, uh, the bolts where it goes into the back of the flywheel housing, those are already started on there and it's pretty flush, uh, but a lot of stuff is not fitting very well. Oh, is that my 9 16 I've been looking for this thing. So it actually lines up pretty good at the back there. We're not quite high enough here, but the equalizer spring is bottomed out on the bottom. For a while I was wondering like if I did something wrong. Now I've been looking at parts diagrams for quite a while. Uh, thinking maybe the wrong spring was on here or something was wrong with this cover. I did find a couple things. One, this shackle is upside down. These two holes are supposed to be on the bottom and there's supposed to be a pin in both of them. But uh, yeah, that's hitting. There is a little bit more space on this side though, maybe because it's installed properly. The other issue with it, so there's a hole right here in the pan and that's so you can get into there and adjust the clutch. And then also right past that, the drain plug for the clutch compartment, which needs to be drained once in a while. Um, I think you could reach, possibly reach up here and, and try to loosen that. I'll, I'll give that a shot later. The one issue I see on this pan though, is this is the flywheel housing right here. And so you're, there's a drain plug in there and you, you take that out and that's how you grease the pilot bearing in the flywheel. And there's no access anywhere in the pan for that. And I think it is okay if the pan contacts the equalizer spring shackle because the pan is already tied to the engine and the transmission. So if this thing's all tied together, but the spring is allowed to, to move, then it should be fine. Okay.
But the issue is that this bolt head is so bulky that it hits the skid plate. Um, so I'm going to take a pin out of another side and put it down here. So these pins, there's six of them, and they are a very extremely hard to find size. They're 9 16 by 4 and a half inches. Could not find them anywhere. I found some titanium ones for a lot of money. There we go, okay. Here. Okay, so I drilled this to show that this clearly is not a hardened pin. So I don't really have too many reservations about using bolts here. And also, this bolt was used for a while. Uh, this was originally in here somewhere, and it's, it hasn't suffered any damage. So this should be fine. Okay, now for the front guard. Okay, so I have a template of this slot, and I thought originally it was for the hydraulic lines. Uh, it's actually for the control. So this must have been used on something where the hydraulic lines were running right there. What happens when this comes forward? There is just not enough clearance for this. I guess I could cut a hole for this, but the whole pump hangs way down from the face to about here, five inches. If I notch this out five inches in, that might work. Maybe I should try that. I mean, I did spend $25 on this thing, so I wouldn't want to waste the money. I just need to cut maybe another quarter to a half off right here. I didn't cut in far enough. Some of these bolts are contacting, so it needs to come out like literally like an eighth of an inch and it would clear. It's gonna be tight. Getting this bolt in down there is gonna be not easy, but I think with a wobble bit I can do it. That one will be easier. Just need to get these lined up with this plate right here. Uh, this is not an enjoyable process. So down here, it's just a little bit low on that hole. It's mostly straight and just a little bit of a tweaking. So you get an idea, I'm gonna have to drill and tap those holes. This clears. Over here I can get into this. I do have to cut more like around here a little bit. It's touching right there. And then I'm also gonna have to cut a little bit there and there just to clear this case a tiny bit. Also that tab is a little bit bent, so I'll fix that. Is this even gonna fit? Uh, that's 
hands heavy. It's like an eighth of an inch to that bolt hole. So I think we're gonna have to hog that out a little bit for it to fit. Come on. Oh! Finally got it on here. I got the trick. There's actually, it's not too hard to get those two bolts in. It's gonna be about right there. On this other side, it'll work too. I just need to, it needs a little bit more nudging. So we do have some nice clearance around here. So the goal here is to avoid drilling through the radiator core, which is why I'm starting on the oil cooler side, which has been deleted. Good thing I painted this lettering down here. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is a, this is a legit mounting spot. Um, if you look up pictures, there's a lot of older cats with this, with this kind of reinforced area where stuff's bolted to in this pattern. Okay, I got my death marked. I'm gonna go very, very slow. The good news is that the radiator is full of coolant, so if I do pierce it, I'll know right away. This thing's probably all warped like crazy now, so let's see how this fits. Well, that might work. Okay, well this took way longer than I thought it was to get this thing fitted, but it's on here. We got clearance around everything. Um, this goes up like that. I'm gonna get some hate about that I'm not using the original cat guard. But two things, one, I can't find the original cat guard anywhere. I, I looked around, I could not find one. And two, this is actually, I believe, quite a bit stronger than the original. Just the way it's set up, it's, it's braced on here pretty good. And frankly, this is about function over form. So the one issue is that I had to cut like all this stuff out and the hydraulic pump is hanging down about an inch at the lowest point. The, the belly pan comes up to about the front of the radiator so I'm gonna have to do something. I A little bit of moisture out here, so I'm just gonna... Oh! Yeah, somehow I lost my square, so. There we go. I got a new welding helmet, and it turns out a lot of my issues were that I couldn't see what I was doing. quite chilly out here. That wind is brutal.
anyways, I got it mounted back up and it's, it's fits. There's some stuff to address like right here, but I'll, you know, it's easy to fix. And there's about a quarter inch of space between the bolt and the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a section right here out so I can access, this is the filter housing and the drain. There's also another drain right there, but I'll just, I only need one. So I'll cut that out. Okay. I got this finished up. To be honest, this is not my best work, but in my defense, it, it was really cold when I was welding this up. So it's on here. It's on here solid. I did a little bit of grinding, but not much just, just to make it look bad. One thing I did do is these, this section was not welded. I don't know why. There's plenty of room for the weld, so I, I did weld that up, hopefully to make it a little bit stronger. And then inside, I just kind of spot welded it. One other concern I had with the new guard was that these were the original brackets that went right here. And then the original cat guard, which I don't have bolted in here. But the new guard attaches to this hole so I didn't know if these brackets were necessary to secure this pump or not. What I found though is there's an extra bolt hole right here and it lines up perfectly where you can slide this up and it mounts here and it fits in that new bolt hole. You could, I mean, you could drill a hole like right here to, to match up here, but I think, I think this will be fine. It just, just a little bit of bracing in case something hits it. These were also originally cracked, apparently, which is a very common issue, probably because they don't fit like perfectly in here. But I did drill through the cracks and patch them. Got a lot of painting coming up, so I may as well get to this hood, which I just got recently. And this is a correct D47U hood. It's pretty straight, there's like, you know, it's this stuff maybe I can bend back. I don't know what this is for. Is this to hang like a engine louvers on or something? The only damage is over here. You got a couple points popped out. It does clear the exhaust nice. I don't know what these are. There's, there's this on both sides. It almost looks like a grease fitting, but it's not. Perfect. Here. It's just a little bit better. Okay, so all the stuff is ready for paint, which is going to take me forever. Okay, I've been pretty much actively avoiding working on this because it's a complete disaster, but it's kind of time to do it. So this is the blade control slash winch brake control. Uh, it's just been completely destroyed several times and then welded back together. This here is the blade control. And uh, it's just, it's been bent slightly there. It's been welded a couple times. Brake control is a little bit bent. Actually, I think I bent this. This is my fault. So I'm not going to blame anyone for that. I didn't bend this and you just look on the welding on here. I'm not even sure where to start on this thing. Um, it looks like they've made it out of angle iron, like the base. Maybe this part is an actual, the actual, you know, winch break. Like maybe this one piece is from the original cat, uh, blade control. And then like, I mean, is this supposed to be bent? I don't know. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, but I think I'm just going to take it apart and then just piece by piece try to... How is that possible? There we go. Jeez. It's slightly bent. Before I waste any more time on trying to salvage what I can off of here. 
decided I was looking at some old pictures and I'm actually a little bit concerned. So I hooked it all kind of back up. This is how it was originally. And it, it doesn't fit very well, by the way. But before I continue, this, this broke off. I think I actually broke this off, but the welding on here is not good. If this breaks again, I'm just gonna get a new one, but we'll try to get this one to work. We'll grind this one down. <laughs> anyway. Okay, sitting back up here, and this is exactly what I was worried about. This is how it looked in the pictures. I mean, there's a lot of play in here because I have like a, a broken screw in there, but it's like I can't use this with my knee. And I don't know how it was ever really used. I mean, I'm not that tall. I'm only about 6'4", but it's just, you can't, you can't. So anyways, I don't think this is going to work for me. I do understand why it's set up like this, and it's a lot of it's laziness, but I think it's also because of the winch. I think this winch is set up for a fender tank instead of a seat tank, just like the winch I pulled off for uh, salvage workshops. On these, this is the brake lever, and it, it's supposed to run like pretty much right through there. On the other winch that I pulled, I think it, it kind of curved over here, but the seat is way thinner on a fender tank model. So anyways, this has to run through it has to come over to here, and it's, it's easier if it's just a straight shot. So that's why they put the winch brake there. And then because of that, they couldn't put the hydraulic handle there. The hydraulic handle is actually supposed to go around here somewhere. So they had to move all that, and they just welded this mess together. Uh, my plan is to go back to the stock cat hydraulic control handle and try to just bring this back to where it was. I had a really hard time finding a handle, but I did post to the Antique Cat website on their for sale forum, and someone had one for me, and here it is. A huge, huge thank you to Russ. He really helped me out on this. Um, I don't know what I would have done without him, actually, because I could not find one anywhere else. As far as the, the winch brake, I think this piece right here, and then this, and then the handle, obviously, are all original. I'm gonna save those and I'm gonna to try to move, like build a new bracket and move it back to around here. As far as the control rod, this is just square channel. So I think I can drill a hole through here and then run the rod through so it contacts. But we'll worry about that later. That's a problem for future Matt. All right, so it looks like, I think maybe it's like this. Like that maybe. The picture shows this rod going through this hole instead of this one. But this hole, this, there's like some kind of plug in here. No. There we go. We got that out. Not really sure what's going on. Yeah, we got a washer. And it's a tight fit, which I think is actually good. The other one was way looser. Also the benefit here though is right down here I can put a grease fitting in. I was wondering, when I rebuilt this, I was wondering what this grease fitting was for, and that's what it is. You're not supposed to use that side apparently in a significant amount. One's a little bit longer. This handle is a little bit bent but we'll leave it how it is for now. Even if it was straight, it wouldn't hit the cushion. This is luxurious compared to what was on here before. So, let's see.
Probably want it to be straight up and down when it's not being used. It seems pretty good here. So for this thing to go forward, it actually needs a clamp here because this will rotate otherwise. It looks like originally something was welded onto here, but there's no way I'm gonna to try to weld onto a hydraulic pipe. And I think I remember there was a clamp on the brush cage somewhere. It just needs somewhere to hold it to keep it from swinging out like this when you push it forward. I think I found a good setup here. It's basically straight up. It's a neutral, everything's straight. And then inside here, this is like perfect. My hand would be right here and then it's right here. That is pretty nice. So I'm still gonna have to, I think, straighten this bar out, but I'll do that before I paint. Okay, pretty happy with all this. And I'm gonna end the video right here. I need to go ahead and take all this back off and paint it. Pretty frustrating way to end this video. I'd hope to have the blade on by now and be you know, moving dirt around, but there's just, the last 5% of a project takes so much time. There's a lot of fitting and fidgeting, and it's best to do it now uh, versus later, in my opinion. So next video, I think the blade's gonna be on. We should be able to ride it around, do some work with it. And we're very, very close to having this project done. We can move on to the excavator. Very excited about it. Anyways, guys, thanks for your patience. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And by the way, I have been tracking costs for this project. I will be sharing it at the end. So I know a lot of people have been asking about it. It will happen. I will share it. Just hold tight. <laughs>